Okay, hello class and welcome to our 12th lecture series on management essential and I am your, your instructor Dr. Jamal. So we will continue the function of organizing from management functions. So this would be the, our last topic on this uh, organizing uh, series. Last time we talked about planning and then uh, organizing. So we talked about in our last lecture the uh, how we organize people. We talked about the HR management, human resource management. Today we'll talk about managing groups and teams. Okay. So let's talk about this chapter of learning learning objective. There we go. So we will define groups and the stages of group development. And then we will be focusing on the components that determine group performances and satisfaction. And the last, we talk about teams and best practices influencing team performances. Right? So what do you think? What is group? Any one of you? Please do participate. What do you think? What is group? Mitali? It's, uh, a... Good. Please continue. Okay, Pablo. It's uh, um, a few people who, who have the same interest of the same characteristic. Uh, sorry, you asked to define teams, right? No, only group. Please Hello? define group. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, uh, a group. Uh, I think that a group is just uh, two, like two or more people that uh, share a common goal. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes, Elias, you raise the hand. Or, or I think just two or more, more people that are so things that are common here that two or more people are coming together, but with overall goal. So I think we are on the same page and we understand each other regarding group. So let's just talk about the formal definition of group here, which means two or more people interacting with each other and they are interdependent. So guys, can you hear me? Jacob, other? Yeah. Yep. Good, good. Yes, yes, we can hear. Good. So, two or more interacting and interdependent individuals who come together to achieve a specific goal. Right? So, here the word interdependent is very important. And of course, one person cannot make a group. And then for a common cause or common goal. So, there are two types of groups, formal groups and informal groups. What do we mean by formal groups? So they are work groups defined by organizational structure and they have designated work assignments, specific tasks, specific tasks to accomplish organizational goals. Right, so everything would be according to the structure, according to the designation. We call this designated work, formal group. Whereas informal groups, these group occurs naturally at workplace, and they tend to form a friendly environment. 
right with common interest with common interest so we call this for example at uh, lunch table or in 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 office cafeteria you go and meet to the people for example uh, all the gms they normally sit on every monday for a tea party or for having a tea in organizational cafe or on a lunch table they're just talking about this stuff how we you know how we are handling the task and this kind of stuff in a very informal and lovely manner in a very friendly manner all right so the thing between formal and informal is the written rules and pre designated or pre uh, you can say that defined rules between formal and informal all right so informal they have already designated goals that they need to follow that so the examples of the formal groups are command groups which means defined by organizational charts like this is finance so we have cfo under cfo we have the financial manager we have uh, senior financial manager this kind of stuff so there is a whole command group task group which composed of individual brought together to complete a specific job all right we have cross functional teams very formalized and the idea is that that they are they brought together or they are brought together because they want to use their knowledge skills and ability to various areas where they need you know to or for example to set up a new department or to acquire a new de department for restructuring purposes you hire top best persons of different areas and then you gave them the management so that this new business or this already business who is crumbling so that they can just make it stand on its own feet then self managed teams in which groups are essentially independent and that in addition to their own task right they also take other responsible uh, responsibilities as well right so for example this task is given to you now it's your own way to scheduling to planning to evaluate performance on your own way we are not pressurizing you to use this software or to do this work by this way or you have to come at 9 to 5 specifically to do the job all right then stages of group development if groups are so much better we talked about formal teams then how we can create groups so group development stages are five number one forming so the first stage in group development it occurs as people join the group and it's a very formal in which you introduce people okay this is mr that this is mr and this is miss that right so you discuss some work assignments so once they have joined the second stage begin you think about that okay i have given this talk okay you would be managing that he would be given some presentation he would be given some writing documents okay then the next natural stage is storming which is why i am being given more task why i am not be the you know leader right why i have to report him or what he is doing so there is a storm you know as name employs storm 
So the second stage in which group development characterized by intra-group conflict. So during this stage, what we're trying to achieve by this storming, everybody, you know, talk about, okay, you have some kind of like problem with him. This is the time to, to talk about what are your issues? What is your suggestion? What we should do so that with all this, future possible conflict which is going to hurt you a lot going to be discussed here so are you comfortable working with him what, you know maybe you have a past history uh, or maybe it's pleasant or maybe it's un unpleasant right so during this stage a relatively clear hierarchy of leadership and arrangement of the group decisions emerge so sometimes this stage tells you who would be the leader who is coming down everybody else on under whose command everybody listens right sometimes you just gave a fake name okay okay uh, we are thinking that this is going to be the leaders and everybody start jumping okay this has this issue this has that issue and that whatsoever and then out of sudden a uh, one person starts speaking and everybody listens and then this is the point where the top management thinks that okay this should be the leader because everybody listens to him right so in that case then the third stage curve comes normalizing then everybody is calming down and a close relationship started to develop right so in this stage there is now a sense of group identity okay we belong to this group and there is some kind of friendship or friendly way to talk about okay uh, under his command i am ready to do that what will be my deadline and how i am going to be uh, 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 you know uh, completing my task so basically you are solidifying the group structure and what are its common sets of expectations from its members right okay we are giving we are giving this responsibility to you so what is your time expectations we are giving you 10 days it is okay can you do that and if there is something you want to talk about so in a very friendly way in a so you give us some reasons or how many resources you need okay this is hr person you are responsible to hire people what kind of people you hire with the, how much you know remuneration 